Hey guys, welcome to Sean Does DIY. You ever go into your garage, you push the button to open the door and nothing happens? Or maybe your garage door opener is just running slow, or you want to upgrade to one of those new models with, you know, the smart home features and all that. Well, today I'm going to show you how to replace an existing garage door opener. And while I'm at it, I'm going to talk about installing a new garage door opener if you don't have one. Now, this is a relatively simple DIY that just about anybody can do. So let's get started. So I'm an avid DIYer and I'm willing to, to mess with just about anything, you know, take it apart, try to fix it, uh, improve on it somehow, whatever. Uh, but I also know my limitations. And when we're talking about installing garage door openers or messing with garage doors in some way, uh, there is one thing I absolutely will not touch is the spring. Uh, whether you have the springs like this or they're in the rollers, um, you know, on the sides of the doors to help open and close the door, unless you have the proper tools and the experience and know-how, don't mess with this thing. These things are no joke. Because if you start fiddling with this thing and it pops on you, it literally could take your head off, all right? So there's my disclaimer, uh, my whatever. Um, so unless you're a professional garage door installation person or whatever, don't mess with these, uh, again, because they'll, they'll hurt you bad, all right? Cool, all right, let's get on with the install. Before we can install the garage door opener, we obviously gotta take everything out of the box, uh, you know, throw it up on your bench or on the floor or something like that, lay it all out, make sure everything's there. Your instruction manual should have an illustrated parts breakdown of everything that's supposed to be in the box. So hopefully it's all there. Uh, you know, the last thing you wanna be doing is up on a ladder doing something and go, ah, oh, I'm missing a bolt. Um, now garage door openers of this type, they all have very similar installations. So there's some common tools that, it, you know, that are common <laughs> to, you know, installing garage door openers of this type. Uh, you're going to need, uh, you know, a tape measure, a pencil, safety glasses are always good to have. Uh, you might need a square. You're probably going to need a number two Phillips and maybe a small flathead. Uh, you might need a hammer. You're going to need some sockets and a ratchet, uh, some wrenches. And if you don't have, you know, wrenches, normal wrenches like this, you can always use adjustable wrenches. Uh, you're going to need a drill and some drill bits, some wire strippers. Uh, you're going to need a level. And you're obviously going to need a ladder, a six foot ladder. And if you have like a step stool uh, in addition to the ladder, that's really helpful as well. Okay, so we got all the parts laid out. We got all the tools we're going to need. Now we got to go look at the garage door because there's some things we need to double check to make sure we have a nice smooth installation. We need to measure the height of the garage door to make sure we don't need any additional hardware like a rail extension kit. So this, my garage door is seven feet. And that's pretty much typical for most standard homes. Uh, if you have anything over eight feet, you're probably going to need the rail extension kit. So look in your manufacturer's instructions that came with your specific model of garage door opener, and it should tell you what you need. We need to determine the highest point of travel on the door as it's going up. Now typically that's going to be when the first roller starts going horizontal after the curve. So all we got to do is raise it up, have someone hold it, or put a piece of wood or something like that underneath it. So we'll just take that measurement and we'll remember it for later. So that is, on this door, it is about 93 inches. All right, 93 inches, got it locked in. So we need to find the center line of the door. Uh, if you have a garage door already installed, it's pretty easy. You just find your center support on the door itself and there's your center line. Um, measure the garage door. So about eight feet, this is a 16 foot garage door. And I'm just gonna make a mark on the wall where the center line is that I'll later transfer up for the new bracket when I take this rail down. If you're installing a new opener, you wanna make sure you can attach the supports for the motor into the joists into the ceiling. You can't just put this into the drywall, it's not gonna work. Uh, you also wanna make sure that you have power within three feet of where the motor is. If you don't have power up here, you're gonna to have to get your licensed electrician out and install an outlet for you. So whether you're replacing an existing garage door opener or you're installing a new one, you need to make sure that where the center line is of your garage door, there is some sort of header or you know, support behind drywall if you have a finished garage uh, to where your bracket for your rail is gonna go. Uh, you can't install these with you know through the drywall with some kind of drywall anchors. It ain't gonna work, it's just gonna mess everything up. All right, so make sure you have that and then you're good to go. You're gonna to wanna to check the side of the garage door where you're gonna install the safety beams. Uh, you wanna make sure you have a piece of wood that's behind the uh, drywall if you're finished or that you have somewhere to attach it. And you also wanna make sure that when you put it on the wall, it's gonna 
clear the door. Uh, whether or not, if it's not, you're gonna need to add, you know, a, a block or a two by four or something back there to get it sticking out enough so that it'll clear the door and we'll stop the door if, if something's in the way. All right, so we got everything checked out. We got our parts, we got our tools, we checked the door. So now we gotta do is get the old one out so we can put the new one in. All right, we got the old door opener down. Now it's time to start assembling the new one. Uh, you know, follow your manufacturer's instructions for your specific model. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the rails put together. Uh, you'll notice on most of them, they're gonna have a specific rail that's got, you know, something for a pulley, depending on whether or not you have a belt or chain drive or something like that. So we're gonna start with that one. And we're gonna get a pulley. This one just takes a little like a clevis bolt deal, a little pin, and a cotter key. All right, that's pretty easy. Now we got to put a bolt through here. Tighten that down. All right. Now we just uh, start assembling the rails. In this, this particular model, they just kind of slide together. Cool, easy. All right, next thing we gotta do is we're going to put on the, uh, the deal that, the, that drives it, basically, that holds it. And on this one, there's a little arrow that says door. So that means it goes that way. All right, next we gotta do, what do we gotta do? We gotta put on the, uh, the part that's gonna actually attach to the motor. That just slides right there. And then there's a bracket that will attach to the motor. It just sits on there for now. All right, so now we gotta feed the, the belt or the chain or whatever you might have. Now you need to look close at your, uh, at your instructions for your particular model. Uh, on this one, this is a belt-driven one, and it has a, like a gold bolt and a silver bolt. So they're pretty specific about it. On this one, on this Genie uh, 750, the gold goes through the, um, the pulley and the silver comes around over here. So, uh, you know, obviously look at your instructions and this one, it says the, uh, the teeth of the belt go towards the rail. So I'm going to take this down to the other end, get it all untangled here. You obviously don't want it twisted. Let's see, how are we doing there? Okay. should have a, like a turnbuckle right here. Just gonna start it on this one. And this is how you'll get your tension. So you wanna make sure you come through your little slide here. All right, make sure we don't have any twists. Everything looks good. And there we go. All right, so you want to hold your belt or your chain or whatever it is and just turn the turnbuckle so you don't get a bunch of twists or anything like that in your belt or chain. And you want to get it tensioned. And look at your manufacturer's instructions on you know, how tight it's supposed to be. Um, 
This one specifically says on the opposite side of the turnbuckle, the belt when it's tension right should be about a quarter inch from the bottom of the rail. Tape measure. Take a look here. All right, so I'm at about an eighth, so I need to go a little tighter. All right, that looks good. Okay, so next. I'm looking at my instructions over here to make sure I do everything right. Um, all right. So once you get it tensioned, we're just going to lock down the two bolts here. I'm going to make sure, I'm just going to double check that I don't have any twists in the belt. Good. Okay. Grab a wrench. And so I'm just going to hold the uh, middle of the turnbuckle there. attach the rail and the belt and all that to the motor head. Okay, go upside down here and you got you a spline right here. Should have something similar to that. I'm just gonna feed the, being careful not to mess up the teeth on the spline. There we go. And it should be pre-greased and all that. And then this little guy's gonna go right here. And just a couple of these Let's see. Seven sixteenths. And you don't have to torque these down like super tight. You just want them nice and snug. little back plate deal that covers up the, uh, keeps the uh, belt or chain, whatever you have coming out of it. And it started here. Okay, so we've removed the old bracket and now it's time to figure out where the new one's gonna go. 
So when we measured our door earlier, we found the center line. So I'm gonna take my level here and I'm just gonna line it up with that earlier mark. Make sure it's level like so. And then I'm just gonna transfer that line up. And then when we found the maximum height of the door, we got that measurement. So in my case, it was 93 inches. I'm just gonna measure up 93 inches from the floor. And it looks like it is right about at the top of the spring. Makes it easy. All right, so I'm just gonna mark that. And then on this particular model of door opener, it says to go from that line two and a half inches up. So double check in your instructions to see what they tell you to do. So I'm just gonna take my two and a half inches from that mark, and I'm gonna mark on the wall. All right. Then I'm just gonna transfer that line across. And that'll help determine where our bracket's gonna go. All right. And now, I'm just gonna take our bracket, stick it on the wall and we're going to mark where it's going to go. Okay. All right. And then we'll just drill our pilot hole. All right. Into the joist bar, the stud behind it. All right. And that's all you got to do. And now you're ready to install the bracket. So you might've noticed that uh, the lines and everything were already there while I was filming this segment. Uh, my camera battery died, so I'm reshooting it uh, with the whole thing. Now, you can use your ratchet and uh, to put the lag bolts in, or if you have uh, the correct bit, you can always use your drill. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my drill to get them most of the way in, then I'll use the ratchet to finish them out. All right, good to go. So the bracket's installed, so now we're ready to install the whole door opener. We're gonna hang it up here, and then we're gonna hang it on the ceiling where the motor is. So we're ready to hang the opener. Now, if you're installing one for the first time, you need to make sure you install your hangers from the joist. And to find out where those need to be, you're just gonna measure from the end of the rail at the door side over to your motor. You're gonna determine that length, and then you're gonna measure from the, on the ceiling from the wall above your door to the ceiling and mark it. And that's where you're gonna hang your perforated angles or whatever it is you're using to hang the motor. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get this thing hung and installed. All right, so this is where you wanna pre-position your six foot ladder. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this on top of the garage door, the rail end, and then we're gonna set the motor on top of the, um, on top of the ladder. Now, if you have someone to help you, that's a whole lot easier. All right, so let's get this up here. All right, so I'm gonna set it on the garage door. And I'm gonna set the motor on the ladder. All right, careful, hopefully it doesn't fall. All right, so now we're gonna come up here and we're gonna get your pin, your clevis pin, and your, you know, your cotter key or whatever it is. And we're just gonna hang that in here. Careful not to let it fall. There we go. And then mine has two holes in it. Uh, according to my instructions, it says to put it in the top one. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, where is it? There it is. Okay. Put my cotter key in there. All right, cool. All right. So now we'll come over here and we'll hang the motor. Now I got lucky. <laughs> I'm able to reuse my uh, hanger that was already here for my existing one. So you just want to get your bolts ready. Get it up there. And you're gonna to wanna to hang it. You wanna kinda of get it as level as possible. Put one bolt in, put the other bolt in. I can see it. All right, let me get on my ladder here. There we go. Sometimes it's easier with, if you have another person. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple, get my nuts started here. Now I'm just gonna grab my level real quick. I'm just gonna make sure we're 
or level on the, the rail. All right, let's see. That looks good. Okay, so now I can just tighten everything down. Move my ladder a little bit here. All right. All right, everything's nice and tight. Perfect. Okay, so now that we got that hung, it's pretty easy. We're gonna go ahead and hook the garage door opener to the actual garage door. Before we can attach the opener to the door, we need to install the bracket. So you're just gonna to wanna to line it up on the center line of your door, and you wanna make it about even with the top roller. All right, and then you get your self-tapping screws. Solid. All right, so now let's get the, uh, the arm here. And depending on your, your manufacturer, your, your specification, your, your, depending on your um, uh, opener, sorry, it's getting hot in here with this door shut. Uh, you know, look at the instructions, see exactly how this goes. Uh, mine has a couple of pins. I'm attached to the door end here. Put the uh, cotter key in. All right, let's see. Got another pin for this one. A little closer, huh? All right. There we go, pin. All right, and now usually you're gonna have a couple bolts that are gonna hold it together. And you wanna get it as close as you can see here. Well, mine's not lining up. That's awesome. All right. So get it as close as you can. There we go. So I just loosened up the, you know, did the emergency release there. It'll catch once we actually get it installed. All right. Put our bolts on there. Our nuts, rather. Cool. Let's get those tightened down. Oh, I got my ratchet. There we go. All right. Tighten down. And while we're here, we might as well go ahead and install the little emergency release. I'm just going to put it on here like this for now. You know, if you have your car coming in here or whatever and you need to, to raise it up, you can do that too. You just got to remember that you need to be able to reach it. I'm going to go ahead and raise this up a little bit higher. You need to be able to reach it from, you know, standing on the ground. All right, we'll just stick that for there and I can adjust it later once I get everything installed. All right, cool. Okay, and I can easily reach it to pull it. All right, cool. So the next thing we got to do is we got to get the little uh, safety laser things installed. So when you install the safety stop sensors, you want to put them about five or six inches above the floor. And on my opener, it doesn't matter which one goes where, on which side. So I'm just going to put it on here and I'm going to mark it. my pilot hole, move that out of the way. So 
now we're going to do that on the other side and we'll be ready to install the wires at the motor head. Okay, so now we can install the wires from the safety stop sensors and the wall switch into the motor head. Now you want to check your instructions to see which wires go where. On this particular model, the black and white wires from the safety stop sensors go in number one. And you might need a little screwdriver to hit the little clamp or locking thing down. All right, and then the white wires go in number two. And from the wall switch, the white wire goes in number three. And the black wire, black and white wire goes in number four. All right, awesome. Now we can get the light bulb installed. All right, and then we can get the cover installed. All right, and now we can plug it in. All right, guys, that was a lot of work, but a lot of fun too. So now that we've got everything installed and we've got power to the motor, we need to check the down limit switch, we need to check the up limit switch, we need to make sure the force control is working, and then we need to program our remote. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the down limit. So now this is specific to the Genie Quiet Lift 750 model 1055. So you just wanna check your uh, operator's manual for your specific uh, brand and model of garage door opener to do all this stuff. All right, so now on this one, to set the down limit switch, we're gonna push the down arrow button. We're just gonna hold it in until a little blue LED right here comes on. All right, there it is. So now we're just gonna hold the down arrow button until it gets to where we want it. Now remember, you don't wanna force the garage door into the ground and you know bend your door, or mess up the motor or something like that. So once you get close on this one, you can just kinda of push it a little bit, push it a couple times. And you just want to compress your weather seal, you know, just enough to keep bugs and weather out. All right, so that looks good on for me. So now I'm just going to hit the program set button. And it should flash and then go out. And now we set our down limit. All right, we're going to do the same thing for the up limit. All right, so now we're going to push the up arrow. It's got a little plus next to it. All right, so we're going to hold it down until the light comes on. There we go. And now we're just going to hold it in. And we're going to raise the door all the way. Here it comes. All right. So for me, that looks pretty good right there. And to set the, the switch, I'm just going to hit the program button until the light goes out. All right, cool. So now we're going to check the force control. So just grab you a two by four and we're just going to toss it under the door where it will hit the ground. There we go. All right. And now we're just going to close the door. And it should hit the two by four and stop and then come back up reverse in less like two seconds or less. There it goes. Awesome. And you should probably have uh, like a little red light here flashing saying, hey, emergency, something happened. All right. And to get rid of that, you're just going to open it, close it back up. There you go. All right, so now to set the remote, you're just gonna pull, you know, it might have a little uh, you know, thing for the battery in here. All right, and you're gonna set, you're gonna push the button. Let me double check my instructions. All right, you're going to, on this particular one, you're gonna hold the set program button for two seconds and you'll have a blue and purple flashy light going on. All right, so one, two, there it goes. So we got a little purpy, purple flashy light. And for this one, you're just going to push the button. You're going to hold it, you're going to push it like twice, slowly. So within like five feet of the thing. So one, two. Yeah, it's still flashing. Okay, so it says, <laughs> uh, da, da, da. And at least five, oh, five feet away. Okay, so we'll come over here. All right. Let's see. One, oh, there it goes, it's working. Cool. All right, there you go, guys. That's pretty much it. So if you uh, like the video and you found it helpful, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that'd be pretty awesome too. Uh, you can hit the bell if you want to get notifications of when I hit, uh, when I publish new videos. All right, guys, well, that'll do it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.